Good morning. Thank you so much for joining me today. Let's get into the Word of God. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter number 20 as we continue our series on uh, Bible characters and looking at the person of Abraham. This time, Genesis 20, we're going to look at verses uh, 15 through 18. Uh, so Genesis 20 verses 15 through 18. Starting with verse 15, the Bible says, And Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before thee. Dwell where it pleaseth thee. And unto Sarah he said, Behold, I have given thy brother a thousand pieces of silver. Behold, he, he is to thee a covering of the eyes unto all that are with thee and with all other. Thus she was reproved. So Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech and his wife, and his maidservants, and they bear children. For the Lord had fast closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Remember the whole story, right? We're, we're still in the middle of this story where Abraham lied to Abimelech and told him, this is my sister. And Sarah went along with this. Yeah, 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 this is my brother. And then Abimelech saw how beautiful Sarah was and just took her to be his wife. And thankfully, he hadn't touched her yet, hadn't officially made her his wife yet, you know, had just taken her over, you know, back to his uh, location. And God warned him in a dream, you know, don't you dare touch her. She is the wife of a prophet of mine. And, uh, you know, I will kill you if you, if you, and, and, and Bill like said, whoa, 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 I didn't, I didn't know. You know, I, I, I acted in mine integrity and God acknowledged that and said, yes, I know, which is why, you know, I didn't allow it to happen that you would touch her and marry her. Uh, so, you know, I'm, you know, don't worry, I recognize that, but don't you dare touch her. Give her back to her husband, Abraham. And so Abimelech did that and Abimelech was very offended, you know, that, that Abraham would do this to him. Uh, <clears throat> so now we come across this, this point in the story where Abimelech, uh, is basically telling Abraham, listen, I, 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 you have the entire land before you. You can dwell anywhere you want, all right? And, and, and uh, you know, my, my, my land is your land. And basically opening it up to Abraham. And so before we get into the rest of the story, I want to first point out right there how, how significant that is. You know, God had intervened in Abimelech and, and really showed Abimelech that Abraham is a servant of God. Even with all his faults and and uh, and you know and and, and mistakes, uh, Abraham was a friend of God and a prophet of God, and so Abimelech in turn said, "Hey, you know what? Hey, I don't want to mess with you, Abraham. The whole land is before you." And so Abraham was blessed by God once again uh, by by uh, you know Abimelech coming to Abraham and opening up his land before him. You can you could take your your farm and or your farm your your livestock your sheep you know because remember Abraham was very wealthy had a lot of animals go wherever you want in my land you know it's it's open unto you and uh, and that was that was because of God because because Abimelech recognized that Abraham was a man of God and so you know realized that promotion comes from above. Right, and and Abraham didn't have to go to Abimelech to ask this of him. Uh, all right, Abimelech went to Abraham because God went to Abimelech, and this is this is exactly how it should be. You know, as we walk with God, He will take care of you. He will take care of us, and and the promotion and the blessings will come from God, not from man. And even though superficially it may seem like it's coming from man, maybe your boss gives you a promotion or or, or, or a bonus or whatever. You know, and and the, as these blessings come. Okay, and again, blessing doesn't always necessarily mean money. Okay, I think we've we, we've uh, talked about that a lot from behind the pulpit. Uh, you know, that's not it; just means the favor of God. But as these things, uh, you know, are being brought to you, remember that they're not actually coming from these men; they're coming from God. Therefore, it is vitally more important to strengthen your relationship with God than it is with any man on this earth. Uh, and so as, as we continue on to the story here, you know, opens up the land and he has to correct Sarah once again and Abraham for, for their deception, what they did. Uh, and rightfully so, he has every right to correct them because they were wrong. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, you know, God had shut up the womb of Abimelech's wife 
and all the maidens and everybody in his household so they could not have children. And so the only way to, to open up the womb again, to remove that, uh, you know, for God to remove that from them, is for Abraham to pray for him. And so Abraham did. And the, the wombs of Abimelech's wife, maidens, everybody in his household was, were all opened again because Abraham prayed. And this is, oh man, what, what, a, what a beautiful illustration here at, at what we are capable of for people as believers in God, as being children of God. Okay, uh, remember that, that as a born again believer, you are a saint you are a son of God. You are a king. You are a priest. I mean, just by, by receiving the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ, by placing your faith in God and receiving his, his grace and his gift, he has given us so much just by receiving that one gift of Christ, okay, and made us so much. And so we absolutely have this incredible ability to go to God on the behalf of other people. And that's exactly what we should be doing as believers. <clears throat> that's the role of the priest. We are intercessors, right? For man. Now, as 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 believers, you know, you don't have to go through me to go to God. If you are a believer, you can go to God directly. But those who are not saved, they don't have the same access to God. They only have one access to God, and that is to be saved. And until that happens, they don't have the same access to God as we do, okay? To be able to go before him and, 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 and have all these prayer requests presented before him and have the same attention from God, okay, and, and, and approach to his throne as we do as believers. And so, therefore, they need us to intercede. The lost need our prayers. And we need to be praying for the lost. We need to be praying for people in general and interceding on behalf of other people. Because this is this is a, a power, a su- almost like a superpower, okay? And an ability that we as believers have. And so many of us just, just ignore it. I mean, can you, can you imagine if like you had... Uh, uh, you know, the, I don't know, the, the, the power to, um, you know, turn anything into food. I mean, would you not be going to all the starving people and just like, bing, 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 you know, turning it into food, you know, so that there's no, no more starvation in the world, right? We have the power to go before the creator of the universe and, put, and give him our petition of anything we want to ask of him. And we don't do it? Why? You see how powerful the prayer of Abraham was? It healed the entire household. They were all waiting for the prayer of Abraham in order to be healed. How many people out there are waiting to be healed because they're waiting for you to pray for them? Folks, let's get on our knees and let's start praying for people, especially for the lost but also for the sick and the needy because we have the power. Let's use it. Thank you so much for joining me today. God bless you. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.